the greatest American alive. Yes. Saying the word. I you've already said D is just like saying. She's calling you. It's like this boy that he's and starts calling them. Wolf Blitzer said, "You it was it was he was like you're you're seriously saying you fear a civil war is possible." And he said, "A year ago, I would have said no, not a chance. But I have come to realize that when we don't see each other as fellow Americans." When we begin to separate into cultural identities, I'm saying that if whites start to play identity politics, then then basically we're facing some some, some kind of disaster. He said that there was a very real possibility of civil war. Joe Rogan said nigger, and now we're headed towards civil war in America. Are you the greatest American alive? Are you ready for a civil war? The greatest American alive. Have you ever been in a race riot? Have you ever seen a race riot for yourself while I was in Harris County Jail on the year when the Cleveland Cavaliers came back and beat the Golden State Warriors when LeBron brought them back from 3-1 to one to win an NBA championship? On that night in Harris County Jail, we had a race riot. It was bloody. It was nasty. I saw friends on both sides get beat up and busted up. Guards got carried out because we were fighting over a sandwich. One white man said this and a black man said that. And then we had mediation in negotiation. Negotiations, they fell through the floor and all you saw was punches start flying. All you saw was blood start flying. There are no friends on both sides. It's go time for the color of your skin and that's it. Have you ever experienced anything like this before? After all the blood was dry and after all the bodies were removed, we still had to negotiate with each other because there's 54, 58 men, I don't recall exactly how many, who still have to live with each other. Let's have honest conversations about race in America, please. The greatest American alive. I want to knock this shit out the park, baby. I want to knock, I want to hit a motherfucking home run. You ready? I'm reading. On the basis of a three-year standard enlistment, about 1,556,000 soldiers served for the federal armies. About 800,000 men probably served for the Confederate forces. Though the records are spotty and make it impossible to know for sure, traditionally, historians have put war deaths to about 360,000 for the Union and about 260,000 for the Confederate Army. Sophisticated tools have convincingly revised the death total to upwards of 752,000 and indicate that it could be as high as 851,000. That enormous death rate was roughly 2% of the population of 1860. Roughly 2% of the total population in 1860 died in the Civil War. A million men died in the Civil War. Yes. Saying the word. I already said. D is just like. Saying. She's calling you. It's like this boy that he's. And starts calling them. And Joe Rogan said nigger a multitude of times and now I'm asking you, what would you like to see happen? Is there any way that we can have an honest conversation about race in America before we head to a civil war? The greatest American alive stands for everyone in this geographic location, not white, not black. Every single person who lives in the geographic location of America is the greatest American alive simply because of where you were born. And now based on this geographic location, I'm asking for us to have some understanding, some empathy and have conversations about people who do not look like us, people who do not believe like us. Hell, man. I'm not really worried about the white supremacists and the white nationalists. I think they're a very small component of the right. I'll tell you who I'm worried about. I'm worried about all of the working class and middle class whites who have had a beaten into their, you know, they, they can't turn on the TV without yet another reference to the fact that they are bad people, that they have a white privilege, that they have been the cause of blacks problems and, and the problems of people of color in general, uh, and that they had better <laughs> their ways or else. And an awful lot of these people are angered by this in a very visceral way. I do not want to lose 2% of the American population due to insignificant differences and insignificant ideas. I want to have a more better belief system. I want to have a more better America. But in order to have a more better America, we need more better Americans. And I think that you're the greatest American alive. That's what I believe. But do you believe that? When you look in the mirror, do you see a race? Or do you see the face of a person who's doing the best they can to survive in America? Who can survive in America? This is a capitalist trap and it's standing on top of workers. They're saying to themselves, hey, I have black colleagues at work, Latino work co-workers, 
and and people in my neighborhood, and I treat them with respect, and I treat them with friendship. I have not behaved in as a racist. I am trying to raise my kids and get them through college and make ends meet, and I'm working my ass off, and I sure don't see that I have any white privilege. But instead of having a conversation about workers' rights and class solidarity, we would rather have a conversation about Joe Rogan saying nigger. Do, do I agree with Joe Rogan saying nigger? No, I don't agree with Joe Rogan saying nigger. Actually, I really don't give a fuck what Joe Rogan says. Right now, I use words that might offend you, but those words help me deliver my message to the best of my ability. These are words that I believe in. I believe in the word fuck. I believe in the word bitch. I believe in the word nigger. I think these words add impact and energy to my vocabulary. I like to fire off nigga, 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 nigga. I like to say motherfucker. It makes me feel good inside. It gives me the energy I need to fight against oppression because these bitch ass capitalist niggas are really putting their foot on the American worker's neck, but we refuse to talk about workers' rights. That's taboo, but having a conversation about a nigger is somehow so productive. And now let's 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 get to the specifics here. Blacks constitute 12.7% of the population as of 2020. All right. Uh, Latinos are at about 18% of the population. And, and let's face it, an awful lot of the energy for the progressive uh, critical race theory is coming from blacks specifically. So now you got 13% of the population there. Non-Latino whites still constitute 60% of the population. That's way down from 30, 40 years ago, but it's still 60%. What is the proportion of that 60% who are really, really getting pissed? Please, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. To be honest, I don't give a fuck about your feelings. The only thing I care about is the success and the productivity of the American person, and that's it. Standing up against actual power and getting actual tangible material goods for the American man and worker, that's it. The greatest American alive, baby. The greatest American alive. Having the right conversation can save 2% of the American population today. In 1860, they lost 851,000 men. I don't want to lose 2% of the American population, especially when you base it on 300 million people. 2% of 100 million, that's 2 million people. We're looking at 6 million dead Americans because a person said nigger. Does nigger equate to 6 million dead bodies? I'm asking. If you think I'm being inflammatory, if you think I'm being hyperbolic, look at the landscape of America. Are, and here's where the danger is, but are starting to say to themselves, well, guess what? I'm an identity too. And you want to play identity politics? Okay, we can go with that playbook. And if you get a substantial proportion of whites who not just voted for Donald Trump, you can have voted for Donald Trump for all sorts of reasons that doesn't make you uh, far right. Uh, but no, it's no longer that. It's no longer... It's no longer political in the sense it was before. It's a much more racially grounded uh, fight than it was before. Everything in the world is based on negotiation. Everything in life is based on negotiation. You can negotiate anything that you want. In order to negotiate, you have to have some type of leverage. You have to have some type of power. And I'm asking the American people, I'm asking you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. What kind of power do you have? The only power that you have in America as a working class person is class solidarity. That's it. People making less than $42,000 a year, actually people making less than $100,000 in America working together to have economic and political power not to focus on a man who has a hundred million dollars because his conversation, his fight isn't with you. It's not with poor people in America. His fight is with billionaires. He's fighting an entirely different fight, and instead of using this person as a tool, as a weapon against oppression, you want to demonize him for saying the word nigger. I'm not here to cape for Joe Rogan. I'm here to cape for the American economy. I'm here to cape for you, the greatest American alive. This ain't the Joe Rogan show. This is the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.
We need to have honest conversations in America so we can get to a more better place, so that we can heal this place, so we can grow this place. The numbers are in our favor. We still have the second largest economy on the planet, and we still have one of the lowest populations. We can invest in the American people if we stop having fucked up ass ideas about what a person should and shouldn't be. Until we stop having fucked up conversations about what a person can and can't say. Use your words and get some power. Tell the truth and get some power. Use your words to be powerful. Hell, man. Dear almighty creator, please bless this great nation that we call America. Please bless these American people and give them some compassion and empathy as we go forward. I don't want to see bad things happen to American people. I want blessings and abundance to come to you all, the greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.